Hi, my name is Sebastian van der Schier. I am a former social anxiety disorder sufferer and a social confidence coach. And I help people feel relaxed, calm, and at ease in social situations, public speaking, uh, meeting new people, you name it. And um, what I hear a lot from clients, which I can definitely relate to, is... Well, I have so much potential and because of my social anxiety, I cannot live my potential. And I want to talk to that and invite you to consider a different perspective. So, my experience has been that I've had very severe social anxiety where, all right, let me think about how bad it was. Um, okay, well, I would avoid going out in the weekend because... Uh, then I knew that I would be in situations where I was going to get anxious and I was afraid that they were going to see me anxious and I was afraid that they were going to think I was a loser and I was afraid that I was going to blush and that they were going to see it and that they were going to think that I was pathetic and that I was just a little boy and that I was going to be laughed at and I was going to be ridiculed. You know, those were, were common fears that I had and so I was um, avoiding you know, going out, avoiding socializing. Things that were really difficult for me were like um, where I'd be the center of attention or where I'd be in groups of more than two. Um, but, you know, even just maintaining eye contact with someone was a problem because I'd be like, well, they can see right through me. They can see my insecurity. They can, you know, almost like they can see inside my soul. They can see all these things that I'm trying to hide. Because I was trying to come across as this cool guy that had his act together, as many people do, you know? We all try to put our best foot forward and to never let them see your sweat. It's actually part of the problem, but that's not what this is about. So, you know, for me, it was a, a really big problem that affected everything my whole life, you know? And I thought about it from the moment I would wake up until I would, and, you know, and I'd be worried about it in bed at night. So... When I would wake up, I'd be worrying about the people that I would run into that day and uh, how I was going to behave. And just the thought of that would make me anxious. And, you know, if they were going to mock me or make fun of me and, uh, you know, how I would then freeze up and not be able to respond, even though I wanted to be cool and in the moment and have a quick, ready response. Uh, but I wouldn't. And, uh, you know, just, you know, this freaking mind... Uh, messing with me and you know my heart racing and a lump in my throat and just having all these problems with myself and it wasn't just the anxiety actually I also had all sorts of uh, you know insecurities really deep dark feelings bizarre thoughts shame uh, guilt feelings and I had a lot more psychological problems than just the anxiety um, you know and in the, in the evening when I come home I'd be worrying about things you know, where, uh, where's my life going? You know, it's, go it's, it's getting worse. You know, wh what if I never overcome this? How can I, uh, how can I ever get a girlfriend? Um, you know, what are, what are people thinking of me? And, you know, what can I do to escape this? And, you know, like all of this doom thinking, I can't exactly remember what it was, but it's, it's been a long time, but, uh, you know, it was just a really, I spoke with a bit of consumption there. <laughs> I hope that's on the camera. It'd be fun. Anyway, so uh, I had a lot of trouble. A lot, a lot, a lot of trouble. But there's a good thing about that. And that is that it forced me to do a lot of inner work. I simply had no option. So while... Um, you know, when I was suffering from social anxiety at first, I didn't even know that I was suffering from social anxiety. I just knew that I was suffering, that it sucked, that it was difficult, that I was feeling feelings I didn't want to feel and I couldn't get away from it. Uh, I couldn't stop them. Uh, it was just happening to me. I had no control over it. Um, when I first learned uh, a bit about psychology and personal development and that you have, um, you know, that there are things happening inside of you, your inner psychology that's responsible for the emotions that you're feeling, for the beliefs that you're having, for the problems, the emotional problems that you're dealing with. Now, 
I got very motivated and very inspired because I'm like, I need to get out of this mess or I will, you know, end up in, let's not even go there, but you know, not a good place. So once I realized I could do something about the problems that I was having, now I was like, okay, I'm gonna do something about this, no matter what it takes. And I, this sounds really cheesy, but I even tattooed my hand with a little cross and I did it myself with a, you know, with a, with a needle and to remind myself to keep going until I had the life that I wanted and then some, you know? And so I started, uh, you know, this whole path of personal development. You know, there's, there's very little things these days that I haven't had a look at or even studied or studied in depth. So I've really immersed myself and, um, you know, gone on this massive transformation. The guy I am today, I'm 35 now. So what I'm talking about, you know, my social anxiety started when I was 12. And, uh, you know, what I'm talking about now, the, the period that I was referring to earlier was around 16, 17, because that's when I really like started looking for solutions. And I, I first stumbled onto like there's a possible I stumbled onto the information about my inner psychology and then it became clear to me, oh wow, it's possible to, to make a change. I'm 35 now, so that's almost, uh, I can do the math, that's almost 15 years, you know? So I've been, I've been at this for a long time. And if you look at the guy I am today, the man I am today, comparatively, I'm so different, you know? Not in who I am at my core, but my beliefs and my values and my thinking patterns and the emotions I experience on a day-to-day -day basis. Like, I'm happy. I enjoy my life, you know? I feel at ease around others. I enjoy connecting with others. It energizes me. I look forward to social situations. You know, I'm excited about, you know, uh, dancing in public. Go figure. I mean, the thought of dancing, uh, that already was something like, no way. But, you know, publicly dancing, going out by myself, asking girls to dance, being on the dance floor, everyone watching you, being the first one to ask someone to dance. All of that, that I'm not saying this to brag, but it's just, it's effortless. This is not a cool thing I'm doing. It's just a normal thing. There's just no anxiety. And what, what happens when there is no anxiety, you just feel normal, you just feel relaxed, you just feel at ease. There's nothing special about it. What is not special is anxiety. It, it's, it means that there's something off. It is a sign that there's something not right about your psychology. And that's the perspective I want you to start considering. So what I've done is I've taken the journey to overcoming my social anxiety so that now I'm able to live my potential. And so the complaint that I hear from a lot of people well, because of this stupid social anxiety, I can't live my potential. Well, you're right. Because of your social anxiety, you cannot live your potential. But, you know, you're not just flick your finger gonna be able to live your potential. You need to work for it. You need to do the inner work to get to that place. Then you'll be rewarded by being able to live your potential. And sure, other people have it easier to you and it's easy to point to other people, but you are dealt this hand and you're now responsible for your shit and you have choices. You can either choice to whine and complain and that would all be valid. And you know, I know how much the suffering is. It really, really sucks. I'm totally with you, but that doesn't stop it. If that would stop it, you know, you wouldn't have the problem anymore, but it only makes it worse. So you then only have the opportunity, the invitation to start looking at yourself, to become more self-aware and to start addressing these problems that you're having. Because as you start doing that, as you start getting rid of the problem bit by bit, you start moving into your potential more and more and more and more and more. So social anxiety is an invitation to do the work to be able to live your potential. So, do the work, man, or girl, <laughs> you know? That's my invitation to you. So, um, yeah, this is a bit of a different perspective on it, 
but it is really true. This is what it is. Once you're, you, you're not able to live your potential when you have social anxiety. It's just not gonna happen. You're limited in so many ways. But uh, there are reasons for why you're limited in those particular situations and scenarios because your inner psychology is you know, out of whack is one way of saying it, but you know, your brain is seeing threats in those particular situations and it's seeing threats because of particular reasons. You know, you know, there are beliefs. So you might have belief, I'm not good enough. There's something wrong with me. People don't like me. Well, those beliefs you've learned some, from somewhere, you're not born with those. So you've had experiences that were very emotional from which you made emotional meaning that has formed your beliefs that you're walking around with today, looking at the world. As a result of that, your brain is perceiving threats and it's giving you the alarm. These beliefs need to be addressed. These uh, emotional wounds need to be healed. As you heal those emotional wounds, you become stronger. As you shift those beliefs, you, your perspective gets updated and you get to see the world as it actually is instead of reliving the painful past, you know? And then you're able to live your potential. So the, the amazing thing these days is that you can do the work and when you start applying tapping to the, uh, to the right targets in the right way, you actually start making that progress and you can do the work to get yourself to be able to live your potential. All right, on that high note, I'll leave you this week and um, thanks for being here. You can subscribe here or there, wherever it is, and I release videos like this every week. Hope this has been helpful. Let me know your insights or thoughts in the comments below and I'll talk to you next Tuesday for another episode of Testimonials Tuesdays. All right, bye for now.